Hello everyone. Now you're going to hear a short recap of the film Shallow Grave. Enjoy watching. The film begins with one of the characters named David talking about friendship. A red-headed boy named Cameron came in on an advertisement for a flat to rent. The three flatmates interrogated him. They poked fun at him and expected only one thing to let him know that he was not their type. They poked fun at each applicant, bombarding them with the most absurd questions. Some were even brought to tears. The trio took group photos with everyone they interviewed. When Juliet was alone, a man named Hugo came to inspect the flat. He immediately managed to charm the girl by talking about writing. Juliet revealed that she worked in a hospital. She shared her impressions with Alex the next day. Unlike other times, the interview with Hugo took place during dinner and the neighbors approved of his candidacy. Moreover, he had no problems with money. David, the most serious of the company, wondered if Hugo had killed people. One morning, the man quietly brought two suitcases into his room. After that, the company did not see him again, but he certainly did not leave. His car was downstairs. The friends were trying to get through to their neighbor to see if he had locked himself in the room. Hugo didn't answer, however, the key was stuck in the keyhole on the inside. The three of them piled against the door and found Hugo naked on the bed and smelling pretty bad already. More than the others, David was shocked by what had happened. Alex immediately began to rummage through the things of the dead man and found used syringes in the drawer. He must have overdosed. Juliet called an ambulance, but immediately hung up when Alex showed her the contents of one of the suitcases. There was a whole lot of money inside. Alex persuaded his comrades to keep the money. David was especially against this, but he couldn't bring himself to call the police. While Hugo was decomposing in the newly rented room, the three of them went off to do their jobs. David came home last. The uncomplaining accountant was loaded with work. He needed to clear a pile of papers in the stuffy room. Nevertheless, at that moment he decided to make a deal with his conscience and agreed to appropriate the money. The friends went to a tool shop. The body must be disposed of while disfiguring it as much as possible so that it cannot be identified. Chop off the hands and feet and pull out all the teeth, said Alex. The remains would be buried in the forest. In general, a shovel, a hammer, and a hacksaw would be needed, but David doubted he could dismember a man. Later he refused to get his hands dirty and so did Juliet. At night, they wrapped the stinking corpse in plastic and then tried to drag him down the stairs. They were not very good at being quiet. At the same time, the mobsters were drowning some guy, asking him where Hugo had disappeared with the money. Without receiving an answer, they sent the poor fellow to the afterlife. The body and tools were thrown into the van. Alex offered to draw lots. Whoever drew the shortest straw would do everything. Having stopped in the middle of the forest, it was time for the trio to play. Juliet pulled out a long straw and breathed a sigh of relief. Then it was David's turn. Everyone was tense. David pulled out the shortest one. While Alex was digging, the poor bespectacled man was sawing the bones and was vomiting constantly. He thought that was all, but Alex threw him a hammer. Hugo's face needed to be smeared. An infernal crunch resounded through the forest. Later, David was lying down and tried to recover, but Alex was fine. He was watching TV shows, drinking beer and laughing. David hid the suitcase with the money in the attic. Juliet took the dismembered limbs from the refrigerator and threw them in with the other bags on their way to the incinerator. Meanwhile, Alex burned clothes and threw car off a cliff. All traces seemed to be eliminated. Our trio went to a charity event. When it was time to dance, Alex and Juliet immediately ran to dance, but David stayed at the table and drank champagne. A spark was ignited between the friends. The mobsters got to the next informant. They kept him inside the freezer, and when the lollipop man couldn't tell them anything sensible, 
they just left him in the freezer. While the friends were having fun, David demanded to have a serious talk about the money. Well, their old friend Cameron was moonlighting there. The guy was called by name, and when he approached, Alex told him that they were mistaken. When another person wanted to distract them from having a serious conversation, the bespectacled man could not stand it and rebuked him harshly. Surprisingly, David had never been so cool. Alex went into the booth to relieve himself, but at the exit Cameron and his friends were already waiting for him. The redhead beat him up. The frustrated prankster refused to come to the phone, and when Juliet picked up the phone, no one answered her. The best way to cheer yourself up is to spend money, so the friends bought themselves a bunch of toys and electronics. They were drunk and fooling around. Nervous and enraged, David swore at his friends. They spent 500 pounds on a video camera alone. We don't know yet how much all this fun will cost us, said David. Meanwhile, the mobsters discovered the flooded car. David woke up because of some noise. The flat on the floor below was broken into, but nothing was stolen. The bespectacled man was constantly thinking about something and was eating much less. His friends advised him to stop worrying so much and spend at least some money. However, the boar wanted to secure them. But what's the point of having money if you can't spend it, you know? I wouldn't risk it if I knew I wouldn't get anything, said Alex. Yes, but you didn't saw his feet off, replied David. It became clear that the operation in the forest had broken David. He climbed into the attic, stuffed the suitcase into a bag, and hid it in the water tank. In fact, he himself decided to move into the attic. His friends were also worried. They wondered how they could hide the money from David himself. The paranoid guy put a lock on the attic door and lied to his boss about being sick, so he couldn't go to work. He then spent all day long sitting in a dark room under the roof. From then on, only two neighbors gathered at the dinner table. The doorbell rang. Alex went to open it and two mobsters attacked him. They immediately tied his and Juliet's hands and started torturing him. Alex's legs were broken. David quietly inserted the key in the back of the keyhole. Alex was not even asked a question, yet he was already yelling that the money was in the attic. One bandit climbed the high ladder and was rummaging between the beams. The second bandit heard some rumbling and groaning upstairs. He followed his partner. David hit the second one with a hammer and then threw the bodies down. The trio was off to the woods again for the funeral. David was completely calm and knew that he would be sawing, chopping, and breaking faces. After this incident, Juliet bought a plane ticket to Rio de Janeiro. David continued his hermit life in the attic. The constant creaking disturbed Alex and then David also poured dust on him by drilling holes all over the ceiling. The girl persuaded Alex to throw their crazy neighbor and steal all the money. But Alex was scared to even think about it. He didn't want to end up in another grave in the woods. A detective came to the flat. He was interviewing the neighbors in connection with the recent breaking of the flat. David didn't know anything about it. What about the other three residents? Asked the detective. The bespectacled man said that only three people lived there and not four. The couple had planned everything and went up to the attic. Alex feared that David might stab him so he warned him that he had come to visit but they were lucky. The paranoid man wasn't there. He was downstairs and sneaked up behind Juliet. After searching the bed, Alex figured out where his roommate had hidden the money. Slash downstairs, an enraged David with a drill was already waiting for him. Maybe Alex sent the cops to get him, wondered David. As a warning, he put a bloody dot on the guy's forehead. Through the holes in the ceiling, the paranoid man was watching the other tenants. He was especially interested in watching Juliet. Finally, he came downstairs, took a shower and ate, but Juliet quickly returned and hid in the kitchen. The girl decided to play a double game and seduce David. Alex received an assignment from his boss to report on three mutilated bodies that were found in the forest that day. He arrived at the scene of the crime. The human remains were discovered by a forestry worker. After that, the mutilated bodies of two more people were found in a deeper grave. One of the 
corpses was completely skinned. At the first opportunity, Alex got into his car and rushed home. The couple were already waiting for him and it is he who was blamed for everything because it was Alex who did not dig the grave deep enough. Hearing the word we from Juliet, the journalist realized that the neighbors were now united against him. At night, Juliet came to Alex to tell him about her and David, and at the same time left him a candy with the inscription love. The friends were very confident of their actions, but the police identified the bodies very quickly. Juliet was now being interrogated. She denied recognizing anyone in the photographs. Alex was next in line. He also knew nothing, except at that moment, the two dead men's car was parked right under his house. In fact, the cops were bluffing and Alex saw through them. David and Juliet were freaking out. They were sure that the police knew about their involvement in the murders. The cunning Juliet was already sleeping with David in the attic. Unbeknownst to her, he secretly took out the money and then quietly lowered the suitcase down the rope. Then he collected his things. A terrified Alex called the detective, but it was night. Of course his office was closed. David, you forgot to wake me up, said Juliet. He couldn't escape alone. David then asked Alex who he was calling at this time of night. He notified his former friend that they were leaving him. The tearful one doesn't look like that funny guy at all which until recently was like David. He became self-confident, acrimonious, and cruel. He knew that Juliet wanted to run to Rio alone. She wanted to rob them both. But for some reason, Alex lied that it was his idea and he bought tickets for both of them. He also asked the girl not to stop David from leaving with the money. David with all his strength punched her in the face. Alex stood up for her and the ungrateful madam rolled the suitcase into the kitchen. Juliet hit David with a toaster in the face. In the kitchen a fierce fight broke out between one against two. At some point David sat on top of Alex and stabbed him through with a knife. But David himself was stabbed in the back of the neck by Juliet. She walked over to Alex but didn't help. Instead, she drove the knife even deeper into his body and then also hammered the knife with a shoe. Nailing her friend to the floor, she ran away with the money. But Alex didn't die. He woke up from the bright flashes of the cameras. The detective leaned over him. The guy himself was smiling. He outplayed everyone. There was no money in Juliet's suitcase but newspaper clippings. The banknotes were nestled right under Alex. A frustrated Juliet could only fly to Rio de Janeiro as she had planned, and the dead David concludes that not all friends can be trusted and goes into the refrigerator in the morgue.